What's up, faithful? Welcome to the 49ers You've Got Mail podcast presented by Delta Dental. I'm Lindsay Polaris, and we've got a very special guest in studio today. Three-time Super Bowl champ, Hall of Fame quarterback, the list could go on, broadcaster, Mr. Steve Young. Welcome to the show. Thanks, Lindsay. It's good to be here. So, Steve, you are a part, you were a part of three Super Bowl teams, uh, a bunch of great games, and now you've remained a Bay Area resident, and you get to watch this 2023 49ers team clinch the number one seed in the NFC for the 10th time in franchise history. How much fun are you having watching this team? It's it, The fun is in the memories. Like, oh, I remember when it felt like that. I remember that moment when we clinched. Or I remember when we got the bye week. I remember when, you know, it was those kinds of things because they're familiar and uh, and the joy watching, you know, Debo and Trent and the gang, George, watch the Cardinals come and beat the Eagles and right in front of like that reminds me of those moments. And so I, I love it for these guys. And I also love it that it reminds me of such kind of cool memories for myself. Have there been any standout games this season that have really brought you back to one of your playing day seasons? Yeah, I think when they went to Philadelphia, because when we had played Dallas in the regular season, because we knew, we thought that you'd end up seeing each other in, this, in the championship game. They had seen Philadelphia in the championship game. So those games are the markers for how the season's going. Everyone's watching. And so I, I, I'm familiar with those kinds of games. You know, the big Monday night games, the ones against the Ravens on Christmas. Like, there's these moments that Candlestick used to – I used to think that that old stadium, it would it would move. You know, it would – people were in there and it would – and I think it probably did move a little bit. because I, I don't probably know, did, was, yeah. I don't know how stable it really was. <laughs> but it was like there was an emotion and there was always these big games. And they felt big and they and the emotion that was in the stadium and the people that were there, they got to know each other. They sat next to each other through generation. And it was like I'm starting to feel that – here, which is super cool. We hear a lot of this current team and really every team talk about this 1-0 season and that every game matters. But is it when you look back on your career that you look at those games that some of them were a little bit bigger than others? Yeah, I I think that we were in a situation. I started in 87 and we were in the number one seed for eight of nine years. So like it became, you know, the, the team that this is the team this year is what we were felt like we were doing every year. And so the big games were every, <laughs> like every, every week. week, you know, <laughs> this is never. And so I think that's how I bet you the guys that played this season, at the, they look back on the year. What was the big games are like, man, every game felt like, you know, everyone's Super Bowl against the big team. And so I think that that's who the 49ers are today. And that's who we felt like we were back in the day is that like we were everyone's Super Bowl and we're good with that. And we, we actually like and relish that role. And I think that's what I'm very familiar with this football team this season is that feels very familiar about how they look at the world, who they are. And, uh, and I love that about them. That number one seed became very familiar for the teams that you were a part of, but it is in fact a very rare and big accomplishment for teams in general. How rare is it to clinch that number one seed in week 17 have week 18 be low stakes and then have that first round by. So it's happened. We have, I, I, I don't, I felt like it happened every year, but I, I know <laughs> that it didn't, but it did. I know it happened a few times and um, it was always a complex situation because as football players, you love some rest. It's been a long year and getting a break mentally, if not physically for sure, but mentally too, is a beautiful thing. But it also has a double-edged sword because in some ways, Football is an emotional game, and if you're not emotionally ready, if you're not, you know, up to uh, the, the kind of that white hot uh, competitive feeling, you're not going to play as well. So, and you get that from just having it come every week. And so, there's I, I, we loved those years when we clinched early, and uh, I remember one year the Giants needed us to win the last game. I want to say it was we were playing the Vikings. And we, we didn't win, but we didn't, no one played really, you know? Yeah. And that was a famous uh, uh, Phil Sims when he said the 49ers laid down like dogs. And like <laughs> Ronnie Lott remembered that and went after him the next year. But those are the situations that you love to be in. You love to be able to decide for yourself. You've earned the right to decide for yourself what you want to do and how you want to do it. And that's a fun spot to be in. The quarterback position, obviously, 
probably the toughest position in football. In order to stay mentally sharp, how do you do that in a 21-day span? Um, there's real discipline to it. Um, you, you have to be willing to sacrifice kind of everything in your off time every week. And, the, and that discipline's hard. You, you know, like human beings, we love a break. Like, hey, you know, I need, I need to take a break. And there is no break in great football in the NFL. If you want to play great football every week, there's a discipline to how you get the game plan on Tuesday, hopefully afternoon when the coaches have it fresh, maybe as late as Tuesday night. You start memorizing it. Wednesday goes into preparation. Thursday, Friday, and the goal line and short yardage. And Saturday's the day to kind of put it all together. Um, if you don't hold yourself accountable to the data of the game plan every week, the motion, the blitz, the tendencies, um, then you're, you're not going to play as well. And I don't care how good you really think you are, owning the data every week is the secret. Anyone who's watched Tom Brady play or Peyton Manning play recently, recent history, knows that that's, that's the secret. I watched Joe do that. I remember this funny story when I first joined the team and, uh, and uh, you know, Bill Walsh would come in and he'd do the you know, installation on Wednesday morning and we just got in the books just 15 minutes earlier and I was leafing through it trying to see what was going on and Bill would ask a question and who, what do we do here? And Joe would always like, well, you know, that's what we do. And I'm like, you just, how do you process you just, Yeah, well, you just got the, <laughs> you just got the book. And uh, and after that happened a couple of times, I was talking to Mike Holmgren, the offensive coordinator. I was like, how does he do that? He goes, I fax it to him Tuesday night. It's a strategy. And I was like, <laughs> well, then fax it to me Tuesday night. <laughs> and that became, you know, watching Joe prepare and the data and how he, you know, owned that data was what I learned to do the same. Like that was the secret power in quarterbacking. And the guys that are willing to go through the discipline of doing that, going to school, Every Tuesday through Saturday is the, is the key. And that's most great players that I've known through the years are not willing to do that. They'll do some of it, but they will not stay the course every week, all week to make sure that they own the data. And those are the guys that are the guys that do that are the guys that are MVPs and Pro Bowls and Super Bowls. That's just that's just the truth. And I tell, I, Lindsay, I tell other players, other young quarterbacks, if you want to be great, this is how you do it. And I'd say that most don't listen because it's hard. <laughs> it's hard when you're, especially when you're one of the great stuff. athletes that ever yeah. lived. Well, what do you mean? I'm going to get an A minus on the test anyway. I don't want to, I don't want to go through that, all that rigor, you know? And so I was like, no, you got to do it. And for the rest of the players on the team, um, just the 49ers injury list is so long that I don't really have the luxury of resting everybody. At this point in the season, what's the wear and tear on your body? Everyone's beat down. But I think not just physically. Again, I tell you about emotionally. People don't realize how the emotional strain on the body and on the mental strain. And a lot of times that's more important to take the, take the rest, especially for some guys. But um, if I said, if you're hurt and you need the rest, man, there's nothing better than getting completely healthy. Nothing beats. You can be, yeah, take six weeks off to get right. Cause if you're right, you're going to play better. But if you're healthy, man, I'd want to play a little bit. So the Rams are taking a very similar approach to the 49ers also resting Matt Stafford along with a slew of other starters. Then head coach Kyle Shanahan says he expects kind of a vanilla game plan from both sides. Right. Is that at least conducive to everyone coming out of this week 18 game healthy? Yeah. And I think that you have two of the most innovative minds and I, I, it'll be hard for them to take the week off. A, van a vanilla game plan doesn't yeah, exist. Yeah, It just feels like when they get together, there's, I've watched them call plays and seen the formations and what they do. They like empty the tank against each other. <laughs> And it's like a one-upsmanship kind of thing. Like, you think you're innovative? Try this. And that's like, they pass it back and forth. So I got to believe they're going to, I think they probably will try out new ideas that they've been toying with that they'd like to see kind of in a game situation. So I expect vanilla is, I think is probably the antithesis of that. I think there's okay. going to be a lot of complexity just to see what it looks like on tape because they probably want to like, I want to try this. 
um, because I, I want to use this against the Eagles. I want to use this against the Cowboys. I want to use this, you know, I don't, I don't necessarily need to worry about, you know, the Rams seeing it twice. Like I just, so I suspect both of them probably do some pretty cool stuff. That's where I was going. How do you tow the line between testing some new stuff out, not giving too much away when the Rams could potentially be your opponent in that division? Round? I think you could care less. The truth okay. of the matter is I, I see Kyle and I, his dad was the same way. They build off of what they did the week before and they're always have an innovative mindset. They're never stuck. And so they're leaving that whatever you have on tape is in the past Just part of it. It's the past. Don't, I could care less whether you go study that all you want, because all it's going to do is, is keep you from seeing what's going to happen to this, this weekend. I love the great innovative minds. There's probably less than 10 of them in the NFL today. And those are two of them. And so I, I don't, anyone that worries about, well, I don't want to show like, no, we're leaning in. We're going to show you everything. Cause that's, They're we're going to build off of that. Build, right. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just going to build off of that. And, uh, um, the idea that people get, a, you know, get into, cause there are some teams that are very rote, very static. And that's when you get trouble. Like, Oh, I don't want to show them that because I'm going to show them again next week. Mm -hmm. and that's not the 49ers. No, not with Kyle Shanahan calling no, the plays. Absolutely not. Well, whatever happens in the regular season finale, this 49ers 2023 team has done tremendous things. Unbelievable. <laughs> um, I think Can I give you a stat that just blows I my I was just going to give you one, but you go first. <laughs> that their, their passes behind the line of scrimmage, their zero yard passes, I think the league, the second in the league yards per pass is 8.1. Their passes behind the line of scrimmage lead the league. And the rest of the league running, throwing the ball downfield. Like that to me is a stat that I, you could never, ever imagine. It's never happened before. Uncharted efficiency. It's a completely uncharted place that, you know, because you think about it, what is the greatest goal of an offensive coordinator or head coach, offensive minded head coach, is to make it as complex for the defense as possible and as simple as possible for the offense. That's Bill Walsh's mindset. That's what he brought into the into the game. Now, 30 years later, Kyle Shannon's taken it to its, got to be its zenith, right? There's no <laughs> way, you can't get more than zero yards passes leading the league in yards per attempt. There's no there's no place to go beyond that. That is, that is if Bill Walsh was alive today, I guarantee so you he'd hand the throw towards it, <laughs> kind of like, you did something that was impossible, and Kyle's actually done it. So... That probably leads into the stat I was going to give you, which is, of course, that the 49ers first team in NFL history to have a running back tight end and two wide receivers all over a thousand scrimmage yards just speaks more to that efficiency. I mean, do you have a player that impresses you most in terms of pass catchers or, you know, running back and Christian McCaffrey? Well, they all bring such unique but valuable and scary things. And I just don't know how you prepare for everybody. I think you can't. You have to pick. And I think what, what makes it, why the efficiency is so dramatic is that whatever they end up trying to stop, Kyle just goes right beyond it. Like, it's like, well, then what about, you know, what about Kyle? What, I mean, you check, what about like, just, there's no stopping this team. Uh, Juwan, like people are just going to emerge. And, uh, and, and Brock, like he said just a minute ago to me, like every play has an answer with Kyle. I felt the same way with his, his dad, Mike. Every play has an answer. You just got to find it. And if you're really detailed and done the work, it'll, it'll, it'll emerge for you. And I think that's, that's why Kyle and Brock are such a great tandem. Mm -hmm. Because Kyle ha gives him opportunities and it says to him, you'll find the answer. Just If you're studied and ready and you're efficient, you'll find him. And then Brock goes and finds him. You had the opportunity to speak with Brock Purdy, someone who has gone from pick 262 in the draft to now a Pro Bowl quarterback and the 49ers franchise leader in passing yards. What did the 49ers see in him that everyone else missed? Well, <laughs> they didn't see him in, for a lot of rounds, I'll tell you that. But for it was few, impossible. But it's impossible because what Brock is best at is you, you can't measure it. It's at least hard to really know. And that's that ability to, you know, I, I, someone told me that before the Monday night game recently, or I'm, I'm earlier in the season there, it was a, 
it was late. It was a Sunday night game, and uh, I saw someone. And one of the players says, "Yeah, Brock was out this morning, midday, out in the field alone, going through the game plan as he walked through with a piece of paper and just going through it." And it was like that warmed my heart, right? Because my that was my my whiteboard in my house that I wrote the whole game plan out, and every night I'd memorize it, and I'd go on Friday, I would close my eyes and go through the whole thing, and it just that's the kind of person Brock's the kind of guy that allows for this explosion of efficiency and this explosion of, of an offensive innovative mind. I had an offensive innovative mind around me. He's got the the tip of that spear. And so it's, it's, it's I told him, do you know how lucky you are? And he, and he said, well, I'm it's my only place I've ever known, but yeah, I, people tell me this is really, you know, pretty fortunate spot to be. And as, as a quarterback to be great, you need a lot of help mm-hmm. and that's never going to change. And to get a lot of help, makes you helps you be great but being great is not easy and what brock's doing is not easy and i tip my cap to him so this was actually a fan submitted question but we'll get there right now who do you wish you could throw passes to on the current 49ers roster oh come on i mean <laughs> like you, you there it's really and that's what kyle does he tries to get people in space and get some unique areas and 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 um you you just want to give it to any of them with room to run. Mm-hmm. Just let them be the great athletes that they are. And what I loved about this, I don't need to choose somebody because the truth is they are actually cheering for each other. Very rarely in professional sports do you get a group of all-stars together and they actually play selflessly. It's very rare. The Warriors historically have done this in the past when they were champions, you know, KD shows up. It's like we're selfless. We play. Don't worry about who gets the ball. And people talk about it, but they don't actually do it. Mm-hmm. This team does it. So to me, who I'd want to throw the ball to is it doesn't matter. Give it to somebody because the truth is they're going to block for that guy. They're, 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 they love that that guy's the superstar of the week. You don't feel the jealousy and the typical stuff that happens in every other football team, by the way, that kind of devolves into losing and like just don't see it and i think that's what's beautiful about this team is you can see the joy they have for each other's success it was think about the the mvp conversation a couple weeks ago and there brock says well no i think christian should get it yeah that was like christian's like well no trent (laughs) trent should get it like it was just i like that doesn't that doesn't happen (laughs) like you got to realize that this is a this is a moment in time with a unique group of people that you just have to relish Uh, them being together and hopefully they can stay together as long as possible we want to give a shout out to delta dental the podcast sponsor here niners protect your teeth and your budget with dental plans from delta dental get fumble free dental coverage today so we're going to dive into our fan submitted questions since this is a mailbag show so i'm going to give you some questions from our youtube fam and they have a ton so i hope you're ready okay so as a former MVP, what's your opinion of the 49ers MVP candidates, Brock Purdy and Christian McCaffrey from this season? Uh, that they're very deserving because um, the, the MVP, people always say, well, there's who's the most valuable and the most important or the most, the, the, the award goes to the most influential in, a, in some ways. Like who's influenced the team, who, who's, who's led the team, you know, and so – both Chris, I would love to see a, a running back win it. It'd be super cool. A non QB. Yeah, just yeah. I, I think that needs to happen at some point. Um, this might be the year, but the idea that Brock, from his history and who he is and how he's done it, it's a movie. It's a movie script that we need to we need to make the movie because I'm it's sure just, some studios it's already incredible working on because, it. Incredible <laughs> because and then to have him think about it, just talking to him a minute ago, he's thinking about it as yeah, you know, it's great. But, you know, if it, great if it does happen, it's great if it doesn't happen. It's fine. I'm the same guy. And I just think there's a, super, there, there's a superpower in that perspective. And uh, so I, this, forget about MVP. This team's going to be tough to beat. I like right? that answer. It's going to be that's tough good. to beat. And that's who you really – like the MVPs come and go. Uh, even division titles come and go. But in the end, you want to be a team that's just – Really, really, really hard to beat. And so anyone who wants to come beat this football team in the, in the playoffs, good luck. 
What was your favorite outing for the 49ers during this regular season run? Outing? Which game was the most impressive? Probably Dallas. Probably just because the emotion of it all and people, maybe because his strike. Yeah, I, I was about to say, this probably me, strikes a chord with you, know, you, yeah. So maybe that's why. <laughs> but I think it was a signal to the whole league. And that's why I think so many times you need to speak to the league. Because that nine times out of ten, you're winning football games coming out of the locker room because of the perception. Like, oh my gosh, these guys are great. And they're like, oh, I don't know, you know, or not. And so the biggest statement they made all year long, I think, was at home against Dallas when they just took them and rolled them and then ran them out of the out of the building. That that's when everyone's like, oh my gosh, this team, watch out. Real. I watch think a lot out. of people would agree with you. Yeah. And uh, now they've had some look, they had tough times come. That was fine. And people started to wonder, is that really real? And then they answered back. It's like, yeah, yes, it it's is. real. <laughs> this one is from Sean. Who was your favorite teammate? Well, I mean, Brent Jones, my roommate for 15 years. I mean, he took care of me, man. He was, he, honestly, I owe him my life. He like carried me half the time emotionally. Um, uh, you know, uh, I, I owe him a great debt. I talked to him recently and reminded him of how much I owe him for putting up with me all those years and, and, uh, and just how much he supported me. I needed it. And uh, so I owe him a great debt. Harris Barton was my teammate and friend. I lived with her many years. Um, and uh, uh, Ronnie Lott, I mean, these are the guys, when I first joined the team, you're talking about Joe Montana, Ronnie Lott, Roger Craig, Jerry Rice. Like this was a, this was a pretty good crew. Yeah. It's and now <laughs> and I will tell you, Jerry Rice and I have done a lot of philanthropy work since uh, we retired and we're better friends than we've ever been, even today. That's so it's nice really, to hear. it's super cool. Uh, Jerry and I have really built a, a, a really cool friendship. You should probably join him on the field pregame then. He's here I know, a lot. I can't, I, He's the, here a lot. The, the, the big helmet would, I, I can, my <laughs> neck can't support it, you know? That's and then fair. when he goes running down the, it runs the 100, mm -hmm. I, I'm afraid I'd beat him and I don't want to, I oh, just don't wow. want that okay. to happen. I don't want, I, I mean, that would be, that would just be not right. What's your 40 time now? I don't know. We'd have to go, let's go <laughs> test it out. I could still, I, I can still run something. I don't know. I like that. Well, I, I mean, I think now we need a Jerry Rice, Steve Young, 100-yard I I, I, I I guarantee it will not happen. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So Matt Sanchez wants to know, if you could take one talent from your generation and add them to one of your Super Bowl winning teams, who would it be outside your team? Wait. So ask me again. Talent from outside of your team during your generation. A, a player. Mm -hmm, and then add it to... One of the wow. Super Bowl winning teams you were a part of. You know, I did ESPN work for a lot of years with Randy Moss, and I got to know him really well and always appreciated his athleticism and his uniqueness. And then getting to know him and really kind of building a friendship. He's a guy that would have really flourished. Well, there's a lot of guys that would there's, have flourished yeah. here. But uh, he had unique talents that, um, you know, between John Taylor and Jerry Rice, if you added Randy Moss, I'd be, you'd have to Unstoppable. Out, you'd, you'd have to outlaw so be. <laughs> <laughs> this one's from nana when you look back on your career is there a favorite play that stands out above the rest um you know the run against the minnesota is always embarrassing a little bit it was like oh my gosh stop like do the job don't run around like a madman is this so, just the tumbling into the end the zone, tumbling end zone. so okay. i don't i don't I, i'm not gonna choose that one uh even though it's probably the most famous I think I think the throw to Terrell uh, with uh, against the Packers in the playoffs, just because of the dramatic moment and then how hard the moment was, like to actually throw it into the end zone when it's the last play of the game, you have no chance, and you know the odds are like zero, mm -hmm. and to pull off something that actually was not a miracle, it wasn't like a you know a ball that was up in the air and batted around, like it was a real play that worked, and uh, and I. I love that, you know, the play in the huddle actually worked to win the game. So that was cool. Last one. This one's from Danielle. If you could hand off one piece of advice to this 2023 team as they get ready for the playoffs, what would it be? Um, I think what we've already talked about is whatever the rigor of your preparation that's gotten you here, these weeks off, go through it even though you know you're not going to play. Do not rest the mental game. So that you can be sharp when because the first divisional game, and if you've if you've kind of been mentally quiet for a couple of weeks, and then all of a sudden something happens, you get punched in the face, 
now you're down in the divisional game. You're like, what's happening? And you're just emotionally not ready. It happened to us against the Minnesota Vikings when we were the number one seed. They came into town, and Anthony Carter went crazy, and we just weren't, we didn't respond. And I think that's the number one thing you got to avoid is that divisional game all of a sudden just not, not being ready to play. Just make sure emotionally, and I'm sure they will, to make every kind of preparation. Wise words from one of the greats. Well, thank you so <laughs> much for your time. Thank you very much. Nice to be with you. Faithful, to be featured in our next episode, make sure to submit your questions to 49ers.com slash mailbag. We'll give a final shout out to our sponsor, Delta Dental. And make sure to subscribe to the 49ers You've Got Mail podcast anywhere you listen to podcasts. Thanks so much. 